good afternoon. It's always a great pleasure and honor to be in Kursek, of course now virtually, but I feel so much at home and I miss you all. And I'm sending you my best wishes from New York, where the life is still very difficult. Um, the UN is still sort of closed, although we went in only for two very short uh, days uh, to uh, vote, but we are still waiting for starting our life uh, normally. And I would say that, of course, these times give also us a special uh, possibility to, to bond and to share our views with the whole world, because in a way it's very easy to invite speakers, uh, to invite panelists, so actually we are more busy than ever because nearly um, every hour we have a special meeting with special participants from all over the world. Uh, when um, we were discussing uh, the theme of this summer university uh, where I have been taking part um, for many, many years, uh, I was thinking that after three months of lockdown uh, here in New York and after more than three months of kind of solitude and uh, isolation and at, at least physical distancing, um, we have seen that the role of women and the impact uh, of the epidemic uh, on the lives of the women is especially very important and very interesting. So um, I asked uh, the leaders of the summer university, me to give the chance to talk about this aspect of the pandemic. I just recently gave a lecture to Kursek. I asked about the pandemic uh, and the afterlife. So saying uh, before and after uh, Corona times. So this time I really would like to concentrate on the women uh, issue here. So what I was thinking um, of uh, talking first is um, about the economic impact on women, then uh, summarize the paid and the unpaid care work of women. Uh, I would like to talk uh, about gender-based violence then about women, peace and security agenda, which is very important for all of us. And uh, also about women leadership. Uh, let's start with the economic aspect. The ILO has estimated that full or partial lockdown measures affect almost 2.7 billion workers representing around 81% of the world's workforce. Compounded economic impacts will affect women's economic and productive lives disproportionately, sadly, and differently from when. Across the globe, women earn less, save less, hold less secure jobs, and are more likely to be employed in the informal sector. They have less access to social protection and are the majority of single parent households. Their capacity to absorb economic shocks is therefore really very significant. So in this context, the fear is that gender employment gaps leave women more vulnerable. And these fears are particularly acute in many developing countries and emerging economies. As I'm speaking here from the UN, I'm always talking about the global picture. In South Asia, over 80% of women in non-agriculture jobs are in informal employment. In Sub-Saharan Africa, this figure is 74%. And in Latin America and the Caribbean, 55% of women in non-agriculture job participate in informal employment. Women make up a greater percentage of workforce in service-related jobs. And just a few more uh, details. As of March 31, 
65 countries had passed fiscal response packages equivalent to a total of USD 4.8 trillion. A total of 106 countries have introduced or adapted, I would say, social protection and jobs programs in response to COVID-19. For example, sectors where women are a large proportion of workers and where supply chains have been disrupted should have adequate access to credit, loans, and grants so they can retain the female workforce. Everything we do during and after the COVID-19 crisis must aim to build more equal, inclusive, and sustainable economies and societies. And this includes gender responsive economic and social policies. Here I would like to uh, mention that we have seen really in the front lines what the women did. Uh, the women are at risk or exposure due to the occupational sex segregation. Globally, women make up 70% of the health workforce and are more likely to be frontline health workers, especially nurses, midwives and community health workers. Evidence for the U.S. shows that women not only hold 78% of all hospital jobs, but also 70% of pharmacy jobs and 51% of grocery store roles. They are also the majority of health facility service staff, such as cleaners, laundry, catering, and as such, they are more likely to be exposed to the virus. Women also take the majority of care work in their families. So don't forget that the care works at the families are made mainly by women. Um, Western Europe experienced a sudden lack of private care workers too when Eastern European uh, caregivers were forbidden to return actually to their place of work due to the pandemic. And as these jobs are not considered direct healthcare jobs, lack of protective personal equipment is absolutely typical. So special attention needs to be given to the health, psychological needs and work environment of frontline, frontline female health workers. I would like to mention the importance of mental health. The mental health of the frontline workers needs to be protected so that these women can avoid burnout and continue to save us all. And don't forget, I'm so happy to see that in Hungary, the situation is much better and sort of life back to normal. But here in the US and in many parts of the world, sadly, COVID-19 is still booming. It's there, it, it is here, it is with us. And women are also frontline carers at home. And uh, uh, the unpaid care work performed by them is also critical with women's unpaid contribution to healthcare equating to 2.35% of global GDP. And there are gross imbalances in the gender distribution of unpaid care work as well. I would like to mention that actually um, 1.52 billion students and over 60 million teachers are at home as school closures expand. And the demand of unpaid childcare is falling more heavily on women as well. So school closures uh, mentioning, is it doesn't mean only talking about the unpaid work. It also, we come to girls, the life of the girls, and it could also lead millions more girls dropping out of school before they complete their education especially girls living in poverty, girls with disabilities, or living in rural, isolated locations. When millions of families are at risk, sinking into poverty experience shows that they are more likely to prioritize education for boys and girls. I don't want to give you all the, all the numbers and details I've given you so much so far, but we have got all the evidence and all the data about that as well. Um, 
girls who have dropped out of education or whose families feel that they are unable to provide for are at risk of being sent to child labor or child marriage and end up being at high risk of abuse, exploitation, early pregnancies, which pose long-term health risks and destroy their long-term prospects. Um, dear uh, friends, um, I would like to also mention an important factor when we talk about the impact on women, and this is the gender-based violence during COVID-19. Of course, it can happen to men and boys as well, but mainly, again, the data shows that uh, when we talk about this issue, it is related mainly, first of all, to women and girls. Violence against women and girls um, shows also the economic and social stresses uh, what we have to talk about. 243 million women and girls aged 15 to 49 have been subjected to sexual and or physical violence perpetrated by an intimate partner in the previous 12 months. So before COVID. So with half of the world's population being currently in lockdown due to COVID-19, this number is likely to increase. And we have got frightening news in this context. Uh, in France, for example, reports of domestic violence have increased by 30%. In Cyprus and Singapore, helplines have registered an increase in calls of 30% and 33%. In Argentina, this number is 25%, just to mention a few. In China, the hashtag anti domestic violence during epidemic has taken off as part of advocacy with links to online resources. In Argentina, pharmacies have been declared safe spaces for victims of abuse to report, similarly in France as well. So we have to take all these factors into consideration when we talk about the role of women and how the epidemic really influences the life of women. Here in the UN, for us, it's very important to talk about the women peace and security agenda. And during COVID-19, this is an imperative for us. Uh, the pandemic poses devastating risk for women and girls living in fragile and conflict affected areas. Disruption, disruptions to critical health, humanitarian and development programs can become a matter of life and death. In settings across the conflict landscape, women face isolation, the spread of misinformation, and a lack of access to critical technologies. The call of Secretary General Guterres for a ceasefire, which was actually in the first week after uh, the whole pandemic caused a, a, a kind of real stress here in New York and in the UN, also it was the second half of March, was heard in some places, but many armed forces didn't answer the call. Uh, the Security Council didn't support the ceasefire efforts either, sadly, which always is a big problem in our life. When it comes to the analysis of the impact of COVID-19, the focus, again, tends to consider women as victims of pandemic instead of effectual and conscious actors. We already covered the role of women in frontline, as I talked to you about, but the same conclusions stand for women in conflict-affected areas. A sustainable peace agreement can only be achieved, I believe, with the involvement of women. Um, and I was thinking about uh, talking about women leadership. We have seen a lot of articles. We have seen a lot of messages uh, about women's leadership, how women leaders uh, handled this situation. 
Women in leadership position are, as we know, powerful agents of change and advocates of the gender equality agenda. And um, uh, I, I would also say that uh, women leaders play a crucial role as members and focal points of civil society and women's organizations, listening to their needs and building alliances. They established precedent set of example for the future generation, while it's not an easy task to be the only women at the table. Uh, and I would like to finish uh, my thoughts for food, I would say, this morning or this afternoon here, early morning, uh, with some messages coming from women. And we uh, summarized what the messages were all about. First of all, keeping hope alive. Then finding strengths in community is very important. No give up, never give up, not giving up was another message coming from women leaders. We've seen many women leaders fighting discrimination and have been fighting, fighting discrimination until now. We also recognize the role in women leaders putting people together. Uh, I talked about the community feeling, but also sticking together is a very important aspect. We talk here in the UN and I suppose all over the world about the pre-COVID and the after-COVID times. And I really believe that we have to build back a better world. And um, in that, women have got a very important role. Um, women have got an important role and we've seen women leaders looking immediately for solutions. Uh, also using the creative outlet uh, they can have around them. And um, I would like here to um, to uh, mention a special artist, uh, Frida Kahlo. I'm sure you have known uh, her amazing work and life and strengths, how she really overcame all the difficulties in her whole life. And she said, at the end of the day, we can endure much more than we think we can. I think this is a very strong message. And when I talk to women leaders, we have a lot of uh, discussions with them. And when I talk to women all over the world, I realize that in the morning, probably we don't know how much we can do. But by the end of the day, we realize we can do more as we even imagined. Um, very important motivation for all the women is the sharing uh, the strengths uh, and, and speaking out. Obviously, we are not alone. Uh, women leaders uh, uh, reach out to all the community, not only to the women and girls, but to men and boys as well. And uh, we've seen uh, great examples about that. So I just wanted to, I would say, uh, stress the importance that we talk about the role of women and girls uh, in this ep epidemic. The impact is really very critical. And we've seen great examples actually in my country, in Hungary. I'm very proud of uh, presenting all the policies, what we've seen related to girls and women and the family policies. Uh, and really the UN together with the governments uh, have to work together uh, to gender sensitive policies uh, because that's the only way that we can fight the gender gaps and we can give all the possibilities to women with talent and knowledge and capacities to live uh, up their dreams and become really a very responsible and very effective part of the society. We, of course, all hope that this pandemic will diminish at some point, but we know we still have to wait for that. And um, 
I think the aspect of the role of women, uh, what we have to emphasize, will remain with us for a while. Thank you very much for your attention.